The Fed has made it official, more or less. We need to pay attention to inflation. It's not clear exactly what we're doing, but we need to pay attention to it. And they didn't move anything except some dots and some plots, but uh, were they, did they get it right? Are they reacting in the right way at the right time, or is it too much? Well, I think that first, David, good to see you again. Let me, uh, I think there's three key points. The first point is about the virus, the vaccines, and the variants. The second point's about the dot plots, but what is the underlying Fed predictions of the economy. And the third point's about thinking about this Fed and whether we're in 19. So first point, if you have the three Vs, virus, variants, and vaccines, you, you really have to listen that they need to see the hole that they were trying to fill between fiscal, uh, fiscal stimulus and accommodation was to put the economy back to where it was and with the same growth characteristics or frankly even better growth characteristics. And if you look around the world, central banks are going to struggle as to when this virus is behind them, because at the end of the day is the, is the determinant here. So if you think about India, think about what they went through over the last several weeks. Think about the U.K. delaying uh, uh, the full reopening because of the variants. That's the variant question. You think about the U.S. vaccines through half the population, you can see that's pretty open, and the question is, will the variants affect us? So pay attention to the vaccine path. The second question was the dots, as you said, dot plots, and uh, there's great debate whether these add value at this point. When they're put in, they were put in for a different purpose. But leaving that debate aside, the question is, the Fed's economic projections this year are 7%, next year in the th mid threes. The street actually is 7% matches the Fed this year, but next year, Bank of America Securities and our team there, it's a great team, is at five. In the Streets at high fours. If you believe the street and Bank of America are more right as we move through the year, the reality is the economy is growing much faster than it was, with much more fiscal stimulus still to be spent in the customers' accounts, much more opportunity for the economy to round out and grow. And that's something people should pay attention to, because last year, this time, this year's rate of growth was half of what it's turned out to be or predicted to be. So if those economic growth predictions move, those dot plots will become uninteresting because they'll have to move because things will be moving faster. And the third thing is think about 2019. Same Fed, same chair, different, somewhat different people, same research department. They were sitting there mid-2019, 2% 2, 2 plus Fed funds rate, 2% plus 10-year ten, Treasury rate. Economic projected forward growth was 2%. Unemployment in the threes. Think about that where we are now. We got three times the growth rate projected. Next year, even two times the growth rate projected. A Fed unemployment rate projection in the low, in the low threes by the end of 23, uh, high threes by next year, and low fours, mid fours this year. Th that was a full employment. And what was the only thing concerning them in 19 was wage growth. And you're seeing wage growth. So that'll be the interesting tug of war as this thing normalizes. So, so Brian, absolutely right. We have a remarkable story and the bounce back of the economy and the growth. But what about inflation? Because they also have taken way up the Fed, the projection on the PCE deflator, 3.4%. Core is 3.0%. What are you seeing? You have your tentacles in to so many consumers as well as small businesses, more than anybody else. Are, are your customers seeing, feeling real pressure from, way, from price increases? Well, you know, the great debate is, you know, what is temporary, what is transitory, as at SFP, as Tom was talking about this morning. You know, these terms are used to try to signal the, what they think. Right now, the firm belief, I think, by the Fed is most of this is transitory. We'll see. But the question is, what about the stickier things? Wage growth becomes sticky, and you're seeing that come back. And as unemployment rates come down, and you're seeing you know, the, the pickup employment, we'll see what the new claims are this morning, but you're seeing the, the employment market tighten. If you ask our small business customers, last fall, their number one issue, pandemic, pandemic, pandemic. This spring, number one issue, getting people to work and supply chains. That's a whole different place, and that means inflation characteristics are out there to be filled. But is it temporary? Is it transitory? Um, and there'll be a great debate about that. But I think it still comes down to what you think next year's projection for, for economic growth is and what you see in wage growth leading into that as to whether the stickier parts of this will happen. Now, the reality is, in our customers' accounts, they still have 65, 70 percent of stimulus dollars in those accounts. The average balance for people of two to $5,000 of average balance accounts are up three times and sitting there ready to be spent. You're seeing their spending grow at 20 uh, percent year to date through last through the 14th of June versus 19, not 18, but not, uh, not 20, but 19, meaning the, t the normal year 
19, 20 percent growth. That's very strong. So it's all set up that inflation could happen. That'll be the great debate. But I think we have to get further into the question of what is transitory. So, so Brian, the one thing that seems clear after the Fed has spoken is that we are changing sort of the dynamic. Uh, we were on a loosening phase. We're now going to start tightening. It's not clear when or how, how fast we are going to start tightening. What does that do to Bank of America's business at its core? And let's start, if we could, with trading. I mean, we've heard from a couple of your rivals here that trading's down in the second quarter. Where are you in the second quarter? But could this cause volatility, the tightening, that could help your trading? Well, let's go back to the, you know, our economist, project, economist projections are that the economy this quarter will be about the same size it was heading into the pandemic, which means that you're sort of restored, differently constituted with shortages in supply, labor, unemployment not where we want, spending that's migrated from panic to sort of do it yourself and now to go out and eat and things, restaurant spending up dramatically, you know, travel back to where it is. All that means the economy continues to grow. In terms of trading, it, you know, there's always a seasonality between the first quarter and the second quarter, and we're no different than other people. But the reality, if you really think about it, is volatility helps the trading group. But frankly, from a Bank of America perspective, you'd rather have the economy growing at a solid rate, and unemployment down, because at the end of the day, that means great for the core business. That means great for the uh, capital for markets formation activity, uh, less you know, emergency and more normalized. And also, it means great for loan demand. And loan demand, we're seeing start to pick up slowly as we move through the months of April, April, May, and June, which is better than it was, obviously, last fall or coming into the early spring. So, so Brian, if I understood you correctly, it sounded like you're sort of along with your rivals there on trading the second quarter, which should come down. Am I understanding that correctly? If the market moves, you know, we all maintain our market share, it kind of moves together. So I, I, there's nuances that we'll, you know, we'll get into, but when we get to the earnings and figure out what happens the last few weeks here, but, you know, we're not going to be a heck of a lot different from other people. Uh, so, so that uh, raises the question of, okay, what does it do to the rest of your business? Particularly if we're into a tightening phase, as I say, doesn't know, don't know how long it'll take. Tightening phase, what does that do to things like net interest margin? Well, the net interest margin, the deposit balances are huge, and that's due to the amount of fiscal stimulus that went in the system and the amount of monetary accommodation. So the deposit balances are high. The, loan, the good thing about the business is half our money comes from the spread, deposits and loans, and you're starting to see those loans stabilize as we came through the first quarter and start to grow this quarter at a modest pace. But our credit card balances, you know, fell from $90 billion to $70-odd billion, and that's, those are the kinds of things that indicate the customer is still getting back in the game. Our middle market draw rate on lines went from the 40s to the low 30s. That's lower than we've ever seen it. It's stabilized there and starting to move out. You know, so I think we're in the, tw the tw what I call the twist of both rates and economy, that you're seeing economy normalized and rates move up. Rates moving up helps our business, but if they're moving up the wrong reason, it doesn't help our business. So the good, good thing for Bank of America is when the U.S. economy and the world economies are growing on a fundamental basis as we look forward. Rates are moving up, but let's be frank, it's pretty modest still as a practical matter. And, and let's also be honest, the Fed continues to buy those bonds, which means there's more stimulus coming into the marketplace. Is there demand for the loans? Because the problem doesn't seem to be the interest rates. It's more whether there's demand. Are you seeing demand from your customers? We are. We're seeing as we came through this quarter. Uh, so our small business originations in 2021 May were about 15, 20 percent of our small business originations in 2019 May, and that's uh, you know, it's finally crossed over in in various areas, and that's good. Now, again, it's still not where it was. Uh, we we fell from 900 and. $80 billion of loans down to $900 billion of loans, and it's moving up from there. But, but the reality is that loan growth is actually the core business. That means the core in the line economy is going well, and, and we expect that to continue. And if you think from the first quarter to the fourth quarter, you'll see that growth in deposits continue. You'll see that growth in loans continue, and that's good for banking generally and, and, and us in particular. But, but at the end of the day, we are in the part of the process where you're seeing companies need to hire, need to get goods to sell, need to get goods to manufacture, and that's because a 7 percent growth rate on an economy that is the size of the American economy is, you know, unprecedented. We, we haven't seen that in our lifetime. So think about that underlying activity. That'll be good for uh, Bank of America, be good for America, and that's what we've got to get focused on. Uh, Brian, give us a sense of how the pandemic might have changed your business when it comes to digital. As I understand, you've picked up a lot more digital users. Where is Bank of America right now? Well, the, the three things that happened in terms of digital in the pandemic, number one, consumer adoption continued to go, and by necessity, 
it rounded out. What I mean by that, we, we continue to grow consumer digital customers to 40.4 million active digital customers today. But what happened is the, n the amount of sales went from 40-ish you know, percent moving up to 60, 70 percent, and, and now it's settling in in a high 50, 60 percent. That is very good because that means there's efficiency and effectiveness of reach uh, of the market. But the, important, the second important thing was what had hap inter happened internally. Our ability to interact with customers, our ability to relate to customers. Think about it, four or five quarters of record investment banking fees and the customers couldn't we couldn't go see the customers due to the to the pandemic restrictions so that ability to operate differently uh, is really important and the third thing is it went to various businesses so our wealth management business adoption rates went through the roof in our commercial businesses the cash pro mobile the numbers of users you know went up dramatically and the amount of activity went up dramatically and so you're seeing it round out through all the businesses that the adoption of digital etc yeah, the usage of digital is important and that gives us more flexibility to continue to manage expenses as well in our company. Well, talk about those expenses. Does that mean, as a practical matter, you could see your number of retail establishments go down? I think you're something like 4,300 now? Yeah, it, it's been coming down for years based on customer behavior, so it'll continue to uh, will continue to shape it. So yesterday, the day before, we opened in Kentucky for the first time in our history. So think about that. So we're opening new markets: we Columbus, Cleveland, Cincinnati, Indianapolis, Minneapolis, uh, Denver, Salt Lake City. Uh, and then now Kentucky, I'm trying to think where else we've gone, all have been open over the last three or four years while we're shaping the distribution franchise and more markets we've been in for 200 years uh, due to the fact that, you know, the customer behavior changes. So we watch that carefully. In long term, we've had 6,000 branches at the high point, and now we're 4,300. During that time, the customer satisfaction has gone up, which means the digital and other means of operating have replaced that activity. And that's a relentless trend which we're continuing to work on. Brian, you've talked about the bounce back in consumer spending that you're seeing, and goodness knows you have contact with a lot of consumers. You've got some of your rivals, like Citi, uh, changing their credit standards on credit cards. We have J.P. Morgan really beefing up on marketing. Tell me about the competition over credit cards and what Bank of America is doing. Well, we've always taken a position in our credit card business. It's about our core customers and getting a customer in a wallet and getting it used by those customers through the reward systems we have. So we have the only all company rewards. So if you have a preferred reward, you get rewarded for your cards and your accounts of all types, and you get lower rates on your auto loans and stuff. So preferred rewards is a holistic rewards program. So we focus on the number one thing is the Great Bank of America uh, capabilities delivered to you, and a car is part of that. And so you're seeing that card origination pick back up. It fell probably by 70 percent. It's back now to about 30 percent lower than it was, and that's good for good news. Now. They've got a bar on them, and then they've got to pay us for borrowing on them, which, which takes some time. But the, the reality is it's a, it's a great business, and we like it, but it's part of our core consumer business. Checking well, accounts, sorry, credit cards, auto loans, home loans. Be, be straightforward about it. Serve those customers well on the team. Under Dean Athanasia does a great job with it. Finally, Brian, I know you said that you're hoping to get most of your people back into the offices by, I think, mid-September, you've talked about. Are you going to require them to be vaccinated? Have you decided? Right now, we're moving people back who are vaccinated, which we, our, our team under Sherry Bronstein's leadership, our HR team has done a fabulous job for us in terms of managing through this, uh, not, not with any playbook, but doing it because before nobody had this happen. They've done a great job. So we built a vaccine tool. Uh, three or four months ago and capture voluntary capture we have 70 plus thousand people and it's we're concentrating getting them back to work because that allows people to move about under the cdc guidelines without masks and things like that as more people get vaccinated we keep bringing more back we got a lot of work to get those back but the view is after labor day our view is all the vaccinated teammates will be back and we'll be able to operate fairly normally and we'll then start to make provisions for the other teammates as we move through the fall